we are going to create a Wise Pelican account and create an order from start to finish. So the first thing we're gonna do is input our name, call this Jeff plus test one. Um, and then I'm gonna say Jeff plus test 9898. And then I will create a password. Sorry, that should be at wisepelican.com. And I'll go ahead and create the account. As soon as the account is created, uh, it is going to ask me what type of business I'm using this for. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm a real estate professional. Uh, if I would like a sample, I can go ahead and have a sample sent to me at this time, or I can say begin tutorial. Uh, you'll then see a very quick tutorial on how to use the system. Uh, you can click next through the tutorial, or you can of course X out of it at any time. Okay, so every mailing uh, requires both a template and a mailing list. So let's start by uploading a mailing list first. So I will go to mailing lists and I will add, and I'm just gonna call this list. And then we can go in, I'm gonna grab a list off my laptop here, and I'll click upload. We can also upload the list for you uh, at any point in time through the uh, chat that's over here. Uh, just hit send us a new message or we can also click here and ask uh, support to map that as well. I can also clear my chats and keep that closed. Okay, so once I uploaded my list, it's gonna automatically attap, uh, attempt to match all of the fields on my list. Uh, what's important is that we need just a few fields. We need one field that's first name or full name. We need one field that's mailing address. That needs to include the number address as well as the street, the city, the state, and the zip. Uh, most of these fields I will not be requiring. Uh, if I had a very custom postcard with custom data or I'm doing an automated seller valuation, then I might want some of these additional fields. Uh, because I don't actually need those fields, I'm just going to hit ignore unmapped fields and we'll just use the fields that are required for the system. So I'll go ahead and hit save and confirm that. All right, so now that I have my first mailing list updated, uh, I can go ahead and start an order. I can also purchase a list though. So if I wanted to purchase a list, one of the more common ways would be to draw a polygon on a map. So I can put in the zip code that I would like to draw the polygon in. Uh, I can zoom, so scroll down a little here and you have a zoom icon and I am going to draw a box around where I know to be Optima Camel View. So once I return to the first point, uh, it's gonna go ahead, it's gonna close that polygon and it's going to calculate how many addresses were there. I can now name that list and then I can choose, do I wanna purchase all 692 addresses or maybe I just wanna mail 500. I'll see that the total price for the list has uh, reflected the 500 and now shows $50. I'll hit next and now I can enter in my credit card details, optionally save them and pay for the list. I'm not gonna purchase a list at this time. I'm gonna use the list that I just uploaded. So now I'm gonna to go to my templates and I'm going to select the template that I want to use. Let's use this first one here. And it's going to go ahead and set up that template for my order. So once it's set up, I'm going to name it, let's call it demo, and I'll select that list that I had uploaded. I'm now going to go into edit design.
and I'm going to fill out some basic information. So my name is not Amy Walters. So I'm going to select this text and I'm going to replace it with my name. I will also replace it with a phone number and another phone number or maybe I just want to instead let's not do a separate office and mobile I don't actually have an office phone I just use my mobile and we'll change that there my email I'll replace with my email and then we can replace it on the back side as well Again, I'll just get rid of the office number because I don't use one. And then again, I'll just type in my email. Or All right. You'll notice that on the left side here, I can change uh, anything about the font. I can reposition it. Um, so right now it's centered. I could make that left justified. All the standard things you're used to in any sort of Word or, or other editor. Um, of course, the size as well. And then up here, we'll see that we have colors available. And when I select those colors, I could go ahead and change the color of the text I have here. It's gonna automatically show you the colors that go with the template. Uh, so maybe I wanna change it and put my phone number in pink. All right, so the final thing we need to do is we'll need to modify our images, uh, including our logo. So I'm gonna click here to upload a new image and I am going to upload my logo. And this logo will now be saved in my gallery so that I can continue to use it in the future. I am then also going to upload a headshot. So what we want to do is we're going to want to take my logo and drag it and drop it right over the Your Company logo. We can now select that logo and we see up here on the right side that I can, change, I can choose my fitting. So I can say, okay, fit the logo to the frame, uh, fit it proportionally, uh, proportional outside or a manual fitting. And in this instance, I'm going to utilize a manual fitting I can adjust my frame for it. And make sure that it fits exactly the way that I want it inside that logo space so that it matches my logo. And then I'm gonna replace my headshot by dragging myself on top of that existing headshot and then again, I'm going to be able to modify what my headshot looks like by selecting it. And then I'm going to drag me out a little bit. And now my face fills the frame. I'll do the same thing at the bottom. Just drag it right over. Again, I'll select it modify it so my face fits can move it over a little and then finally add my logo again and let's see if we can do proportional for this frame and i can say do a proportional and center it now if i click off let's take a look and everything looks as I would expect. So now I have my template completely ready to go. 
Uh, I will save it. And now I can exit. So we now have both of the pieces that we need. We have our mailing list and we have our template designed. The default is to utilize standard class postage. You can change that to first class for faster delivery. If I'd like, I can say that I want this mailed in the future. So I could change this date so that this doesn't mail until April 30th. I can also add uh, UV coat protectant, which is just another layer of shine that actually goes over the uh, printed postcard itself after it's been printed. All of our postcards are printed on a high gloss paper. And then I can also use an incredibly thick uh, high gloss stock as well. Again, they're all high gloss, but if I want to get this super thick, a little over twice as thick, I can select that as well. If I'm not ready to place this order yet, I can tell it to save it as a draft order. I could email myself a proof, or if I think I'm gonna be utilizing this again frequently, I could also save it as a new template so that I can go back into my templates and quickly have it ready to go. Once I mail it, it'll also be available as a previous order to mail again. At this point in time, I would go ahead and simply press submit the order, uh, confirm that I'm okay with standard class, review the terms and conditions, and then I would enter my payment details. At this time, I now have a completed order. Once the order has been mailed, I can then track it from my tracking page where you'll see all of your orders. And then also I can go in and I can refer friends using my unique link uh, so that they get free postcards when they sign up and then I would also receive free postcards. So that's everything about creating a mailing from start to finish. It's pretty easy. And of course, support is always available in the bottom right hand corner. These are real people. Simply tell it to send a message, type your message, and someone will uh, respond momentarily.